cape Hey guys, how's it going? It's Matt from Fidelity Gaming TV, and welcome to another episode of your Minnesota Twins Out of the Park Baseball franchise here on OOTP 16. Man, that is a mouthful. Still trying to stay cool here on this Wednesday. I know it is a Wednesday, and I know you're usually going to have, um, you're expecting Challenge Wednesday on Wednesdays, obviously. But the MLB, the show servers are down, so a little bit of a spoiler alert there. I am going to be playing on MLB The Show for the second week in a row for the challenge, and it just makes it easier to do a community challenge that makes it go a little quicker. And to do that, you need to have the servers up and running, which they are not. So, um, don't know what's going on there. On Twitter, a couple other people are complaining. It's not PSN. PSN is up, but MLB The Show servers aren't up. So, I'm recording this on Tuesday. We're just going to swap the spots. OOTP on Wednesday this week, and uh, Challenge Wednesday on Thursday. That sounds weird, but anyways. Let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, I simmed a couple of days since we last met up, and we are still doing pretty bad. Let's go ahead and look at the standings here. In we have 23 wins and 30 losses. That puts us at the third worst record in the AL and the fourth worst in the entire league. And you can see here, Orioles have a three-game lead in the AL East. Indians have a four-and-a-half game lead in the AL Central. Astros have a three-game lead in the AL West. Wild card belongs to the Tigers. The second spot is between the A's and the Rays, they're tied. In the NL, we have the Nationals leading the NL East by three and a half games. The Cardinals have a one game lead in the NL Central. The Dodgers have a two and a half game lead in the NL West. And the Marlins hold a top spot. Um, the Rockies and Mets are tied right now, but technically Rockies are ahead because their percent percentage is higher. But So I guess it's Marlins and Rockies in the wild card for the NL. So that is that. Um, today we're just going to be doing the first year player draft and maybe simming a month if we have time. But I do want to go ahead and show you guys something that I did not show you guys last episode. I, after I was done watching it, um, I realized something that I didn't show you guys. So I might as well show you right now. Let's go to AAA here. Byron Buxton. Look at this. Two star overall. He went up. That is some improvement right there. Um, he was a like a half star overall, I think, or a single star. But he is a two star now. He is going up. It's not like a huge improvement or anything, but uh, he's definitely like he's doing something. That's good. Currently, he's batting 247 in AAA. It's good. And uh, let's see, 18 RBIs, 19 walks, 43 strikeouts, 12 stolen bases. Got caught once. That's all right. With four doubles, no triples though, and two homers. So. Uh, actually, his expectation is to be playing in the majors, so we'll see. Currently, I don't think he's ready. I have myself in charge for the active roster promotion and demotion, so I can call or I, I yeah I call the shots when people um, are moved up into the majors or sent down into the minors. But within the minors, that's my assistant GM's job. So and that is that. Um, like I said, we're just gonna be doing the first year player draft today. I'm just gonna show you guys the first three rounds and. I think after that, hopefully we'll have enough time to go ahead and sim a month. So let's go ahead and start the first year player draft. You can see here that we have the fourth overall pick in the draft. The Arizona Diamondbacks have the first overall pick, then the Rockies, then the Rangers, then us at number four, Astros at number five, and so forth. Just like we had the drafts, oh uh, gosh, about a month ago now in the MLB. So let's go ahead and continue the draft. And we'll see here, well, Let's see, we'll go to the next pick. And here we go. So this, these are all the players. Not sure what, I, what we really need or want right now, but the good part about picking fourth is that you have a lot of choices. Like look at all these guys. So definitely a lot of shortstops to look at here. Um, you can always get starting pitchers too. We look at, actually let's just look at all players. There we go, because sometimes they'll only show batters. But uh, yeah, Brady Aiken's up there. He was first overall a couple years ago. Um, all these guys. So I want to go ahead and not bore you guys with all this. I am going to go find who we're going to draft with the fourth overall pick in this draft. And I will show you why in just a sec. Okay, so here we are, fourth overall pick. I think I know who I'm going to pick. There's a couple of guys. I looked at strictly all pitchers because I think that's what we need right now. And we can get a bunch of very good pitchers in this draft. There's a lot of good shortstops, but we are already so deep shortstop-wise. Uh, prospects and major leagues and all that. So I don't think we should waste our pick on a shortstop. Let's go ahead and get a pitcher. So looking at all these pitchers, and yes, I know there's some third baseman and all that, but they can play pitcher. I'm not going to get Brady Aiken. Um, 
but I, I am thinking about three guys. This guy, Colby Allard, he is 17 years old, out of high school, he's very young, that's the only thing. You can see that the head scout actually rates him a little higher, his stamina's good, all his pitching ratings have such high potentials, projected to be a starter, obviously. Um, this guy, Walker Bueller, he also looks good, also a starter, or projected to be a starter. Good infield arm, not as good potential-wise as um, Allard, but he still looks pretty good. And then also this guy down here, Donnie Everett. This guy is a four and a half star. Bueller and Allard are both uh, five stars, so Allard's a little bit down on the potential-wise, but honestly, he looks better than uh, Bueller. His ratings look a little better, especially with the defensive ratings, they look good too, as well as the stamina. So I was kind of deciding between Donnie Everett, which I just exited out of this, I'm stupid, and um, Allard. I really don't know which one I should pick. I really don't. But I think we're going to go with Allard here. I think this is the one he is going to be hopefully a good starter for us. I know he's 17. I know he's younger. But these potentials are off the charts, man. Off the charts. I think we're going to go with him. So fourth overall pick in the 2015 first year player draft for the MLB is the goes to the Minnesota Twins and we are going to go ahead and use our pick by drafting Colby Allard. Put him in there and we are going to draft him. Okay so the next draft pick we have is the fourth uh, pick in the second round and I think we're going to select Chandler Day here. He looks like a good pitcher. 6'3", 18 coming out of high school. I know he just picked two people out of high school but Right now, these guys look really good. He still is extremely hard to sign, but so is Allard, and they usually say that, and you can still sign him. So I'm not worried about that, but the OSA ratings and the head scout ratings are really good. This guy looks too good to pass up, and um, actually, OSA has him at a five-star potential. Our head scout has, has him at a four and a half. So Sacrifice Bunt is good. He's projected to be a starter, and his potentials look pretty good. So I think we're going to go ahead and draft him, and even though it says... Um, extremely hard. I still think that we can go ahead and do it. So we're gonna go ahead and draft Chandler Day. All right. So the next pick in the draft, which is gonna be the last one, I'll show you. We're I think we're gonna pick up Christopher Chatfield here. He's a right fielder, also out of high school. I hate picking people out of high school, especially this many. But um, he's easy to sign, and it seems like low risk. Um, a lot of these guys would be like four and a half star, five star potential for our head scout, and then you go to OSA and it'd be like a one or a two star potential. So it's really just either all or nothing here. This guy for a third round pick kind of looks, you know, most of my guys have been balanced and I think we're, if we're gonna keep along these same um, traits, then he has it. Head scout rates him at a four star potential and then a three for OSA. So we gotta put our faith into the head scouts here. Hopefully they can get us um, a good player here. It is third round, so it's okay if he's a bust, but, um, you know, you still would like to get something. Is you know, if, if you get a steal, that'd be awesome. So, his defensive ratings look good. He's got some good contact, some pretty good gap power too, or at least potential for gap power. Um, as far as other ratings go, uh, they're just average. Um, but yeah, basically we're getting him for his defensive ratings and pretty decent batting ratings. So I think we're gonna go here and pick up Christopher Chatfields uh, once we find him here on this list, and that'll be it for the first year player drafts as we will draft him and that is that let's go back to the home screen all right so that's going to do it for today's episode i hope you guys enjoyed sorry it was on a wednesday not on a thursday but uh, for those of you that follow the series i'm sure you're glad tomorrow will be a challenge wednesday thursday if that makes sense and until uh sunday I will see you guys on this game again on Sunday. I will see you tomorrow with Challenge Wednesday. Other than that, make sure to go ahead, click that like button, keep the series going. Make sure to check out our channels. Make sure to subscribe. And as always, P E A C E. Peace.